So I'm just going to start by talking about my journey and my journey with hormones and pelleting and why I did it. So my background, as most of you guys know, is internal medicine, pediatrics, and then I got into cosmetics and just started taking that off. But, you know, the thing about it is I always knew that there had to be something better. I knew that if you're tired, you're, you're run down, there's got to be something better than, than polypharmacy and just taking prescriptions. So my parents being pharmacists, I always grew up with medicines. And that, that was all of our conversations around the dinner table for years. And my mom's sitting here. And we used to talk about this and talk about how medicines serve a purpose. And I know that. And I knew that. But I knew that there's also side effects with meds. And I knew that, you know, if you're tired, you're not sleeping well, you, your sex drive is low, your energy is low, you go to your primary care doctor, they would toss meds your way. But the problem with that is every one of those meds has more side effects. So then you're going to take another med to improve side effects. And now you have what's called polypharmacy, where you have numerous medications that just improve something without attacking the underlying problem. So I tried to seek out ways to fix this. And I found that hormone regulation is the way to do that. You can lower your risk of heart attacks, strokes, Alzheimer's disease. You can improve your, your, your anxiety. You can reduce your depression. You just feel better. People go and drink coffee because they want to feel better throughout the day, right? But if you can feel like you're, you're, you have that high from coffee and caffeine throughout the day without taking anything and just naturalistic, it changes your whole life. So I'm here today with Neil Seacrest. So he's the head of the mentorship program. Dr. Seacrest has been doing hormones for five years with BioT, huge into wellness. Him and I have had amazing conversations about nutrition, plant-based diets, intermittent fasting. Um, his wife runs and owns nutrition um, practices and shops and, and vitamin shops. And so I'm excited to have him here today. So I'm going to go introduce him. Let him talk. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Nanda. Appreciate yep. that. I'll put the mic up here real quick. Thank you very much. Okay, so the goal to m tonight is to have you leave more educated than when you came. And I hope that's okay with all of you, but um, I'm not wearing a mask on purpose so you can hear me better, but I've had two vaccines and I got my third one coming, so you're not going to catch anything from me tonight. But I appreciate everybody coming here. Can you, everybody can hear me in the back okay? Good. Our microphone is good. Very good. So uh, when Dr. Nod and I met each other, um, we very quickly uh, realized that we think similarly and um, and I was sharing with him a little bit about my background so I've been uh, I was with the uh, Air Force for a couple tours of duty so I don't any, do have any veterans in the audience I got a federal veteran no okay I thought I did well shout out all my veteran friends and uh, I was one of these uh, poor college students that had to borrow money to go to med school so I had something called educational loans or school loans I know none of you can probably identify with that but and so while I was active duty, I needed to pay back my loan. So what I did was I was down in the emergency department moonlighting on the weekends. So it had a very interesting kind of practice. So during the week, I was flying with super healthy pilots, right? It's the ones responsible for our nation's defense. And then on the weekends, I was taking care of all the stuff that lands in the ER. Strokes, heart attacks, delivering babies, runny nose, sore throats fractured femurs, car wrecks, all the stuff that hits in the ER. And so I was seeing what happens to people when they have accidents and or don't take care of themselves. And what I realized over time is that we don't really have a lot of good treatments for chronic illnesses. Chronic illnesses are like what? Blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, stroke, heart attack, osteoporosis, those kind of long standing things where you have to kind of treat it for the rest of your life. Instead, what we have is a system that teaches us kind of fix and cure. And so, and I'll, I'll elucidate on that a little bit, but what I realize is that how much more rewarding is it to teach people how to not need medicine in the first place? And so that's kind of the theme here you see tonight. And I'm just going to run through some things here. We're going to talk about uh, what really hormones are. And this is going to be our format for tonight. We'll hit these five points here. What are the hormones? What are these? What are the differences between synthetics and so-called bioidenticals, or what I call human identical, the same molecule that is? What are the different available options? How do you apply them to your body or put them in your body? And then can they help both, how they can help both men and women, and then whether or not you're a candidate based on what you learn. And we're going to talk about these so-called risks, because we hear different things out there about whether hormones are risky or not. So to that, this kind of preaches really to how our, uh, how our medical education system is. And so Dr. Nanda and I, I mean, we both went through medical school. And so we were interested initially in our lives in learning healthcare. 
But somewhere along the line, they kind of tripped us up a little bit. We got very involved in what I call disease management. So we were taught our system, as good as it is, teaches us to basically fix and cure, okay? So if the patient comes in with you know, high blood pressure, you give them this blood pressure pill. If they come in high cholesterol, you give them this cholesterol pill. If they got diabetes, you give them the diabetes pill. And so we're taught to kind of fix and cure, but we're re not really never taught about how to maybe look for the root cause of the problem. So after doing ER and all of this for 10 or 15 years, I said, you know what, I'm not really feeling like I'm making a difference anymore. My in-basket is never empty. And I, I'm seeing the same thing over and over. And I said, there's got to be a better way. So of course, I got interested in nutrition. And what I found is if you can peel back the layers of the onion a little bit, look for the root cause of the problem and target that and then effectively deal with that, now we can begin reducing or eliminating the needs for the fixes and the cures in the first place. So I call that healing. And Dr. Nanda is exactly correct in that BioT specifically, but hormone management, hormone optimization is that vehicle, that strategy that we can get down there and focus and target on those root causes, thereby now focusing maybe more on healthcare and less on disease management, okay? So this is our conventional medical system. They teach us that, you know, hey, when you're first starting to get a little bit older, up till about your 20s or so, you're increasing your capacity and peak and everything, then after 20s, things just start heading downhill, and that's our uh, system is starts focusing on the back side of the curve. Hey, how can we make you live longer is the system. You know, average lifespan of a human, you know, several decades back was far shorter than it is today. Today people are living in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they have all these chronic diseases and their bag of pills just keeps growing. So our systems, but their quality of life is low. They, they just don't feel very good, but they've got all these medicines and they take it and they don't like it and they don't know what to do it. And so our system says, yeah, but we can make you live longer, but it's not really helping the quality of life. So you just continue to feel bad, but you live longer feeling bad. And, and so it doesn't really effectively deal with that. So this is the current medical model. There's me there. I'm, I'm the guy at the bottom of the cliff in the ambulance catching patients as they fall off into my lap from the ER. And then at that point, I either treat them and admit them, or I treat them and street them. That's really it. How much better would it be, though, to do this? Put up a, a guardrail. Teach them how to not fall off the cliff in the first place. We call that primary prevention. And that's what we're going to spend our time on. So if I give you medicine, father of modern medicine, William Osler, said it best. He goes, the person who takes medicine must recover twice, once from the disease and second from the medication itself. And I think this challenge was given to us, you know, 4,000 years ago by the first ancient Chinese medical text, superior doctors prevent the disease, mediocre doctors treat before disease is evident, inferior doctors treat full-blown disease. See, that was me in the ER, it's not my fault because I haven't seen them in the past. This was the first time I was encountering them, so I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, but how much better is it to truly primarily prevent the disease? And that wisdom's been around now, as we said, about 4,000 years. So here's really the goal of preventive or regenerative medicine. So there's that curve, right? You get on up, but when you start down, falling down the backside, your quality of life, your QOL starts dropping. So instead, now we teach vitality extension. That quality of life maintains, not just living longer, feeling bad, but feeling great, and then living longer, enjoying that. See, I don't know of the single person that says, yeah, but I want to live to be in my 90s. Well, what if you're all curled up in a ball somewhere and you can't really be a productive member of society? Your quality of life is going to be really low and you probably don't want to live that long. But if you can be out and about, productive member of society in the marketplace, making hay on a daily basis, regardless of your age, then we're talking quality of life. And so what we want to do is give you health span, not just lifespan, right? So we can make you live longer. But how much better is to have good health through that entire life? And so that's really our focus. It's what I call a functional medicine approach. Now that's a complex chart, but if you basically look at those little blue circles, let's use this as an example. In the very center of that left box, it says depression. So let's say the guy comes in and feeling real sad and low, things aren't going good, his sleep is all messed up, and having periods of anxiety and attacks to the point where he just can't really function. Well, traditional medicine says, well, that guy needs an antidepressant. 
Well, but does he really have a serotonin deficiency? Does he have a Prozac deficiency in his body, you know, that we're trying to fix with that? Not really. He's got a root cause problem. Perhaps his thyroid is not quite active. Perhaps his D is low. There's situational things. Antibiotic use, pre diet those are contributing factors. If those are his root causes and we target that, then we, we lower the medication or use it for a very short period of time. That's a functional medicine approach. So here's what you really need to know. Not all hormones are created equal, okay? It is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It is not a cookie cutter. It is designed to be customized. Now, what do we mean by that? Everybody is unique. Everybody has a separate, different kidney function, activity level. They have blood hormone levels. Everything needs to be customized, to, unique to that person in their individual frame, okay? Then you need somebody that's an expert and knows what they're doing. They know all the studies. They know the data. They know the pluses and the minus. And then they partner up with people who are te have other teams of doctors that help and coach them, which is really what we do. And then we do this concept called optimization, not normalization. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, you go somewhere and you get your blood taken, okay? And when they do, let's say, I think what happens is we all reach a season of our life where we're saying, you know, I don't feel myself anymore. How, how come I'm tired all the time? I got dry skin, brittle nails, foggy memory, constipation, low energy, elevated cholesterol, brain fog, cold hands and feet, poor libido, lousy results in the gym, my joints ache, I got hot flashes, nights, so I'll keep going if you want, but I think at some point we're like, yeah, I know what you mean. And so, you know, people don't know what to do, and so they Google it. They Google it, and it might say, like, go get your thyroid checked or something. So you go get your thyroid checked, and, and let's say, you know, there's a range. So the lab draws the blood, and there's this range. It's called the reference range. And sometimes people are kind of down here on that range. But if your level lands there, the phone call back to you sounds something like this. Hey, Nancy, we got your blood test back. Looks to us like you're in the normal range. That's what they say, right? And you're like, I don't feel normal. What is it? And they're, well, you know, maybe you're just getting older. You know, they don't really have a good answer for you. So we don't do that. We move it over to this side of the curve. You see, that's where the younger people are, and that's where their levels are. We put it there. That's where it once was 10, 15, 20 years ago, back in the season of your life when you felt your best. And so we're resetting it to those levels. Over time, it had just drifted down. So we call that concept optimization. Are you following me? That's where things really start happening from a quality of life standpoint. There it is. Do you feel sick, but your labs are normal? Well, what we want to do is put you in the optimal range, and that's what we're doing here with this concept. So hormones are basically this. They're chemical messengers. They work in a lock and key kind of format. So has anybody heard of a compound called insulin? Right, for diabetes, pretty simple. What's insulin do? It unlocks the cell so that the, the blood sugar in the bloodstream can go into the cell so the cell can use it. That's a hormone, okay? There's other kinds of hormones, thyroid hormone, growth hormone. All these hormones are basically messengers. So the question is, do we lose our hormones because we age or do we age because we lose our hormones? See, I think the latter is more accurate. Our hormones start dropping way too early in people's lives which accelerates the aging process. And so we're gonna reset those back to younger levels. So, so do you feel like this, you know, yet you have quote normal labs, right? So some people do, or do you feel like this, having optimal labs, it's a big difference. Or like this, or perhaps here, or perhaps just like this. Let me go back up here. Can we hear this one? Let's see if we got some volume on the television. Let's see if it'll dating myself from uh, Saturday Night Live, right? Yeah, but so I'm just thinking that guy's got a hormone deficiency. That's what his issue is. That's really all it is. 
So if that sounds familiar, I mean, just take a look at the chart up there, you know. I mean, we're not going to read these off, but just if you, if you, as you read that, just mentally go down and make a little, mm-hmm, a tick mark, mm-hmm, see if there's something that strikes a chord. Chances are the root issue is an inadequate amount of hormones for their youthful age. I see this all the time, uh, especially in, like, younger males. I'll have some younger males come to see me. Uh, by the way, my boards are in family medicine. Uh, I've been practicing about 30 years, and so I still see sick patients once in a while. And some of these young men will come to me, and they'll have been to the ER two or three times. And, you know, they're in their mid-20s, and they think they're having a heart attack. And so they go, and they get checked out, and the doc, and I've seen so many of these patients, like, your heart is fine, dude. We checked it out. Go home. It's your nerves. You have some anxiety. You need to go get that looked at. So they do, and they come in seeing me thinking, you know, the sky is falling, and they're having these attacks. You draw their testosterone levels, you watch. Half the time, it's that of a 50-year-old man and a guy that's a 25-year-old body. Why is it so low? There's different reasons, but his root cause is his testosterone is inadequate, right? He doesn't have a Xanax deficiency or an Ativan deficiency. He has a testosterone deficiency. Again, focusing on healing, not just fixing and curing. So fatigue, that's a big one, self-treated. What do you guys do here? If people, anybody around here ever tired of fatigue? No? One of you? Okay. <laughs> Where I come, we got a lot of fatigue, right? So what do people do when they're tired of fatigue? Typically, what do you do? Drink a coffee, energy drink, right? What are some of the energy drinks that are out there? What do you guys sell in this market? Everything? Monster, Monster Red Bull. What are some of these others? Bang. Bang. What is it? Bang, all that. I'm just curious. Yeah, by the way, um, you know, what do they get for those? What do they sell for? Anybody know? $4 or so. $4 or so. Does that sound about right? Going right? Depending on how much, how big it is or whatever. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, think about this. I mean, does your body really have a bang deficiency? <laughs> right? Or a caffeine? Probably caffeine deficiency. But, see, the root issue is the fatigue. What if it's not caused by a caffeine deficiency? So, a lot of people self-treat. And by the way, you know, we've got um, these symptom checklists. I, I, I encourage you guys to hand these out if you haven't done so already. Everybody really ought to have, I'll, I'll just hand these out here to the staff. They can just grab these for me real quick. And then you don't have to fill those out in the middle of the meeting right now, but we're going to hand those out to you people and you just fill them out. But what you'll find is it's a chance to ser let that serve as what I call a before picture. So, you, you know, you're going to fill it up, fill it up privately. If you came with somebody, don't look over the other person's shoulder and try to change their answers. Just work on your own. And then the reason we do that is because this is a system that you, f we focus very highly on the symptoms that you're treating, okay? We don't treat a blood level so much as we treat the patient. So we're in, we need the, the symptoms give us 80% 80, 80 of our judgment for the dose depends on how bad the symptoms are. But we need the blood level in order to ascertain and guide this. But we only give 20% of the judgment to the weight to the blood level. Does that make sense? So 80% of the weight goes to the symptoms, 20% to the blood work. And so that's the way we'll serve, uh, figure this out. So there it is right there. As the hormone levels drop, and by the way, ladies, hormones will start dropping 15 years before menopause. So as the hormones drop, down comes the energy, the mood swings, brain fog, low libido. But look what happens when we restore those hormones right there in the middle. Up goes increasing energy, better sleep, and protection from some chronic illnesses like breast cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's disease and osteoporosis. Those are the things that get better when we start rolling back the clock on you. So here's the BioT method. This is basically what it does. It's going to balance out and or optimize testosterone estrogen in women, vitamin D, and thyroid, as well giving you some very high quality hormone-specific nutraceuticals, things that make your pellets last longer and work better. We'll talk about those. So andropause, yeah, that's a big fancy uh, name for men, male menopause, also called as manopause, right? That's us guys, we're losing our T. We hear it called low T syndrome. It's real common, especially in in us men who we kind of lower, you know, we're starting to gain some weight, our blood pressure creeps up, our sleep isn't very good, our joints tend to ache, it's linked to heart disease, 
so it's a real significant problem by reduction in testosterone. So the facts about testosterone are basically this. They give us major symptom relief for things like brain, bone, heart, breast and prostate protection, that is, as well as the relationships. Testosterone is present in both men and women, okay? So it's not just a female exclusive, sorry, a male exclusive hormone. It's present in both men and women, large amounts of men, small amounts in women. Men will lose 30, age 30 to 70, lose one to 3% production per year. I actually think it's higher than that. In my patient population, and by the way, I'm over in uh, Kansas, land of Oz, don't laugh, but we have a lot of average people where I live and their numbers are way lower than they ever thought they were. Uh, women start losing um, at age 20, 20 to 25, they start losing their testosterone levels. And half of that happens even well before they get to menopause. So it's a big deal. So this is kind of an iceberg, and I always think of the tip of the iceberg, you know. So I might have a, a, a guy, patient come in to, see me, in to see me and say, hey doc, you know, I need a little help in the bedroom, things aren't working as well, do you have any of those blue pills? Well, now that I know what I know, I don't just give them a Band-Aid and here's your blue pill Band-Aid. I'm starting to think, what's going on? Why is this individual having this? So you look below the iceberg, below the surface that it is, and all these other issues are floating below. Remember, only one-eighth of the iceberg is above the surface. Eight-ninth, sorry, eight, one-ninth is above, eight-ninths is below. That's where your root cause issues are going to be, and you're going to help this guy long term. So this is probably one of the most important slides in the entire presentation tonight. I don't encourage you to take pictures of it if you want, but it really kind of describes testosterone thresholds. So imagine if you'll look over here on the left side of the column, it says serum testosterone levels. Think of that in young men. We've got a couple of young men in the room here today. Think about this. Your testosterone level should be 800, 900, 1,000. Okay, if all things are working well in the world and everything has gone well, that's the number you should enjoy. And what we find is if the, it, it's not really that high as much as we thought, but when it starts dropping, us men, we start gaining a little mid, uh, sorry, weight in our midsection, our muscles start to soften, we don't like that. As it drops below 900, we've now lost the protection against future Alzheimer's disease. In the 800s, we actually have a higher risk for prostate cancer. In the 700s, we get metabolic, like a pre-diabetic situation. Down in the 400s, down goes our energy, our libido starting to drop. In the 300s, cholesterol numbers are climbing. Down in the upper 200s, depression, anxiety, PTSD. So really start servicing, and it's not till it falls clear down there to the low 230s does really the plumbing become an issue. That's the last thing to show up. So uh, us men, we not only like, we need our testosterone. We need it for our brains. We need it for our bones and our hearts, not just our relationships. So the therapy I'm talking about here today is going to ramp you right up here to a thousand-ish, maybe even a little more, and boom, you're off and running for four to five months. So it's a remarkable therapy, and it's released based on cardiac output. So what that means is the more you exercise and the more you do, the higher levels you're going to enjoy. Okay, that's different than time release. And then occasionally we hear this question, hey doc, I heard that you know if I take testosterone, I might be at risk for prostate cancer. Well, that was a myth that has been perpetuated for a better part of 70 years. And this was actually put to rest uh, probably 20 years ago. And this is guy, his name is Abraham Morgan Taylor. He's the chair of urology at Harvard Medical School. Uh, has probably one of the most sought after leaders in the world in the urologic societies in testosterone, so certainly an expert. And he poured through the world's literature and released some international consensus statements saying that actually the opposite is true. 19 studies that show there's no increased risk for prostate cancer when you give testosterone therapy. In fact, what happens is men with low T actually have a higher rate of prostate cancer. And then he says, uh, it, when you have that higher risk of prostate cancer, you actually present at a higher, uh, at a, what's called a more advanced stage, a high, you actually have a higher Gleason score. So low T is not protective. It puts you at higher risk for prostate cancer. And so having high T actually becomes protective. So this guy is, is an is amazing individual. He, he's the advanced urologist that you could go to that if you had prostate cancer, he would insert testosterone pellets in and around your tumor and watch it shrink. 
So wonderful data that came out there. Um, so the positive effects of nat natural testosterone for men and women are this. Increased energy, vitality, improved feeling of overall well-being, relief from anxiety and depression, improve cognitive clarity. People say, I feel the brain fog is lifted. I can actually think these days. Uh, memory and focus, of course, libido and performance also go up. And now we're starting to protect the organs like the breast and the prostate and the brain and the heart and the bones. Now we're getting increased strength in the muscles and the bones. We're reducing the body fat, thereby also lowering the lipids. So we're actually rolling back the clock in a, in a very good way, hormonally speaking. Uh, so this is a really a great chart showing us that all the bad numbers in cholesterol with time go down, the good cholesterol numbers go up. And let me ask you, especially some of those out there who have maybe some medical training, what prescription drug could I give that, I, that would also be able to do something like this? Does anybody know? I'll, I'll, I'll make it easy for the audience. The answer is there isn't any. There's no prescription drug I can give that would affect the lipids in this way. Even the statins kind of fall short in that regard. Uh, this is just some of my own personal medical data. Um, I decided I wanted to know to what extent my, I might have any blockages in my heart artery. So I went and got a coronary calcium score. Okay, so basically if you can lay in a tube, a CT scan that's ultra fast and hold your breath for 10 seconds, they scan your heart real quick and they calculate how much calcifications you have in your artery. So let me ask out there, somebody that's got good vision, can you read that top highlight? It says my total calcium score is what? Can you read it? Zero. It says zero. I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. And then if you read down here, it predicts my chance of having a heart attack in the next, next 10 years. It's actually less than 1%. And it says my coronary age is what? Can you read that? less than 35. Now, I don't know if that means like 29 or 25 or what that means. I'm thankful. You know, in Texas, they say it ain't bragging if you've done it, but I'm thankful. My wife got the same score. So we definitely are so um, appreciative for the, this kind of therapy. Let's move on to uh, menopause for ladies. 3,500 women enter menopause every day. Symptoms start 15 years earlier because that's when the testosterone starts dropping. By the way, I kind of let this out of the bag earlier, but let me ask you, uh, do women make testosterone? What do you think? Yes, they do. Did you know that the ovary makes more testosterone over the life of the ovary than it does estrogen? By four to one. So testosterone is not a male exclusive hormone. Now it is in me, but it's not in you. Testosterone is actually your dominant hormone, but it converts a lot of it quickly into estrogen. So that's kind of cool. So women don't really ever get over their menopause or get through it, and so um, that's the problem. So there it is, one in seven, premenopausal ladies. The reason the heart disease rate is one in seven is their testosterone level is dropping. And then when the ovary finally gives out and, they're, and they lose the estrogen, now their heart disease risk more than doubles and they have the same rate of heart attacks as their male counterparts once they hit menopause. So it's a real heart issue. So estrogen, present in both men and women, large amounts in women, small in men. Yes, us men make estrogen. We convert some of our testosterone to estrogen. We need estrogen. We don't need a lot of it, we need some of it. It's what makes us nice, right? So we need to have a little bit. But if it's too low, then we're mad and we're angry and we're aggressive and we're out in the street picking fights with the nuns and bad things. So we don't want low estrogen, we want an adequate amount of estrogen. So for estrogen for the ladies, controlling the hot flashes, keeping the skin youthful looking, increasing the serotonin and the happy factors in the brain, making the bones strong, making the teeth strong, maintaining memory, preventing things like Alzheimer's, improving the cholesterol numbers, and certainly protecting against breast, brain, and heart problems. So hormone therapy, so a lot of ladies are interested in hormone therapy. They're, these are basically your options. You have basically synthetics or bioidenticals. Synthetics are oftentimes made from animal parts or urine, okay? They hit alternate receptors and they create risks and problems and side effects. Bioidenticals, another way to say it, say it is it is human identical. 
It's the exact same molecular structure as what your body, your testicle, your ovary makes. We put that back into you, and there's different ways to deliver it. You don't want to take it orally because it goes through the liver, causes the first pass effect, and makes a lot of inflammatory factors. So you want to, they use other methods like uh, patches or creams or, or what we found to be is the best delivery system, and that is a pellet. So conventional hormone methods, all right? Women's Health Initiative, one of the probably the, the biggest travesties in medicine that happened about 20 years ago is a horribly done study, inappropriately, a lot of money was spent on it, and they came out with some flawed data. They said, oh my gosh, hormones cause stroke and heart attacks and breast cancer and twice the rate of blood clots and 70% uh, increase in Alzheimer's disease. And what they were taking was um, synthetic progestins and that's what caused all these. But they just thought all hormones were bad so all these ladies quit all their hormones, all the doctors got scared to death and said, we can't do hormones, oh my gosh, it's gonna hurt our patients. And so boom, they fell off of them and we lost a generation or more of women from chronic illnesses that could have been prevented had they just stayed on their hormones. So a lot of people went with no relief, and then they realized, hey, those problems were from oral estrogens, or rather oral progestin therapy. And so those are the risks that came out from the wrong type of hormone, and it was a, a risk of cancer and heart disease, all because of the synthetic progestin. So here's what happens when you take it transdermally, they put on a patch. So some ladies say, hey, give me my patch. I wear my patch every three days. The challenge with that, 45% of the people don't absorb through the skin. And so, and then that can also rub off on others. So, you know, dads that put gels on, you know, and they have the androgel and they take their small kids or boys, well, that hormone rubs off on them and it's unfortunately causes some effects. Same thing can happen with pets. So we don't want that too. There's the creams and gels transferring to others. You have to put it on twice a day so it can be messy and it may not absorb properly. So that's not always the best way to do it. Injectable, a lot of men will use injectable testosterone. It's very cheap and inexpensive. Challenge is it's synthetic. It hits alternate receptors, causes an increase in lipids, causes an increase in uh, liver enzymes. And most of us or most people around you can oftentimes tell you when it's time for your next shot before you can because why we start getting crankles so what happens is you take a shot you get a big dose and then it trails off and you get low and then you're just riding this hormonal and emotional roller coaster so it's hard to get excited about that being an effective delivery system so this is really where bioidentical hormone pellets kind of enters the equation and really takes the day so what are these they're natural plant-derived compounds it's actually from the soy plant. Now there's no soy in it. We extract the cholesterol ring to make the hormone so it's the exact molecule that we want. Same structure, lasts longer than other treatments. Women will get it three to four times a year, lasts three to four months. Men, it lasts four to five, in some cases, maybe even six months. Provides a steady stream of blood, hormone in the blood. All of it's customized to the person implanted under the skin, most people don't even know it's there. And again, it's released based on cardiac output, not just time release. The pellets have been around, you know, for 70, 80 years. Um, these have been studied worldwide in five different continents. Here's a comparison, if you will, of like estrogen levels in these different delivery systems. You've got the pills, which go up and down, you got the patches which go here, and then you got your implants which kind of give you that steady state -ish, uh, uh, response. So what is the BioT method? We give you the right kind of hormone, meaning it's not synthetic. We give you the right delivery system, which means it's in the pellet form, and it's customized to you personally, okay? So this, this kind of summarizes it all. Safe and effective, been around for 75, now 80 years no roller coaster effect, low side effect, best method to increase bone density, no evidence of increased risk for breast cancer. In fact, it does not stimulate breast tissue. I would tell you it actually is protective for breast cancer. And those data and those studies have been recently released in the last four to six months. So there's no chance of blood clots, stroke, or any of these other problems that you hear people talk about. Speaking of breast health, uh, this is kind of just a summary here, but testosterone delivered by pellet does not increase the risk of breast cancer. I will actually go so far today to tell you that it actually is protective for breast cancer. So the largest study ever released 
for breast cancers in female was published four years, four months ago in the European Breast Health Journal. And it was uh, on 2,500 patients over 10,000, uh, sorry, 9,000 patient years, the largest study ever. And they showed a reduction in the incidence of breast cancer by 35 to 40%. So when women say, hey, I don't know if I can take hormones. My mom had breast cancer, it's in our family. I don't know if it's safe for me. Is she correct in her thinking that if I don't take hormones, I won't get breast cancer? Is she? She's not. She's gonna get it at the same rate the general population gets it, okay? But if you do take hormones, specifically testosterone pellets or estrogen pellets, she will cut her risk of breast cancer incidence by 35 plus percent over the general population. So it, again, it is protective for that entity. We kind of mentioned that here a little bit about the, the breast cancer recurrence. If you look at like the second one there, it says the recurrence is 17 per thousand in uh, ladies who used HRT, but the ones who didn't use it, it was 30. So more, uh, more than doubling, and the same holds true for their, uh, their uh, mortality rates. How about bones? You know, osteoporosis is a real bad problem. You fall and break a hip. Unfortunately, mortality after that is 25 to 30%. We grow bone at three times the rate of the best bisphosphonates out there, the, the bone growing pills that you've heard of, Fosamax and some of those. So it's a fabulous uh, compound. How about arthritis? Anybody here know someone with arthritis or joint pains? Right, it's a fourth leading cause of disability last year. And so it's a huge problem testosterone and estrogen can actually stimulate the growth of the cartilage tissue and people get relief in their joint pains and improvement in arthritis because again testosterone is a very potent anti-inflammatory. Quickly about Alzheimer's disease. Women get Alzheimer's disease eight over eight to one over men. Did you know that someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's every three seconds in the world? Huge problem, enormous financial burden, uh, so men with low T are three times more likely to develop Alzheimer's as well. So certainly the heart, the number one killer in Americans. I'll just tell you right now that having uh, the, the testosterone and the estrogen, especially in females, it improves all the blood parameters. Women will actually get a reduction in their fat mass in the estrogen plus testosterone group after two years. So it takes time, but you'll build muscle, ladies, and that'll help lower your cholesterol and improve your, your overall body as well. The two other key things that we like to talk about are thyroid and vitamin D. Thyroid is metabolism, hair, skin, and nails. It's what makes us burn fat and helps us keep it that way. Vitamin D is a pro-hormone. And then ladies get progesterone. It's certainly necessary if they still have a uterus and we give them estrogen, but they also really like it for us to sleep because it has a good uh, calming time, uh, a sense to it. So this is basically it for the millions of people who don't want Band-Aids and pills there's a better way you can, a chance to just, fo an evidence-based approach where you can focus on the root cause of the problem. And so uh, pellets are that way. It's a chance again to focus on healing, not just fixing and curing. So the next appropriate step is, uh, and, and this will be available here tonight. Dr. Nanda will come up and share some stuff after we kind of finish the recording a little bit. And that is for, uh, for those that came tonight, you could actually have the ability to get your blood drawn. And I suspect he has some kind of a special uh, rate to do that. This typical blood panel that we do is fairly comprehensive. We have found that when we typically bill insurance, the insurance companies don't necessarily like to pay for it, and so it lands on your deductible, and that price for that panel in our market is somewhere about $1,800 to about $2,000. So we're, we're going to be talking numbers way lower than that tonight, so this cash price is actually going to be a significant reduction. So consider getting your blood drawn. Finally, the last couple of slides here. Basically, there's your comparison. Shots, shots done properly in men should be twice per week, not once per week or once per month. Uh, creams, you have to put on twice a day, so there's 730 times a year. And again, I mentioned pellets, two to, time, two to three times a year for uh, males, three to four for uh, females. Potential temporary concerns of first insertions, okay? So testosterone makes your kidney work better. And when it does that, it starts absorbing sodium, and sometimes you get a little bit of fluid retention because the kidney is working better. It is temporary. We would simply give you a little low-dose diuretic, you'll pee it off. That actually what ha is what happened to me. Uh, so you can get some temporary swelling. Again, this does not happen in the majority of people. All of it is temporary. 
Women can get some uh, temporary breast tenderness if their breast tissue has not seen estrogen in a good number of years because of menopause. We simply give you some evening primrose oil capsules and it gets rid of it. Uh, the, the, the pellet could find a hidden fibroid or uter, uh, sorry, um, or polyp inside the uterus. We would uncover that and get that taken care of. Uh, if you don't mind your temporary restriction, you could actually pop a pellet. Men will experience a temporary reduction in the testicle size and the sperm count for by 10 to 15%. When the pellet wears off, it just goes back to the regular um, size that it always was. So we certainly minimize that with a compound that we give called DIM to help prevent that. So here's your key facts. Hormone imbalance can occur at any age in men and women. Not all therapies are created equal. It is not a one size fits all approach. It is highly customized. And if you have low normal labs, they may not be actually optimal. And so I say, you know, get your blood drawn. So with that, I think we have a chance maybe to just hear from a couple of people that, you know, have had a chance to use the therapy and maybe you can relate to the others. I'll just tell you, I've had the therapy 14 times. I've had 14 individual insertions over five years. And it has been so remarkable for me I can always tell when my pellets wear off because my staff starts talking behind my back. <laughs> They're telling me, hey, doc, you need to get in here. It's time because, you know, I just, I, I probably feel my age rather than not feel my age or rather than feel 20 or 30 years younger. My blood parameters are that of uh, someone that's 20 or 30 years younger than I am. Uh, I'm doing things, I mean, I'm going, to, I do CrossFit uh, crazy. I think I'm one of the oldest guys in the gym, but uh, I feel great about it. It's wonderful. So with that, maybe uh, one or two of you, if you have a chance, you can come up here. Do you mind just sharing with the group a little bit? You're so, I don't want to put you on the spot or embarrass you, but whatever you're comfortable with. And maybe just stand right here and I'll hold the microphone for you a little bit because that way the people in the video can hear. But just be yourself and just share with them. How, how, what was your life like before you ever discovered things like this? Um, well, mine started with, I think, menopause. And I was, most of it was, I was having a terrible time sleeping. Um, night sweats it was just it was horrible and I was got to a point I was so exhausted and started looking around and found the the implants the the hormones and it was it's life-changing um, it truly was for me um, and I've been at it for 10 or 12 years and I have no intention of quitting <laughs> any what, what does it do for you that you like um, well number one it stopped the night sweats um, number two, um, I'm an exercise nut, so I, I, I mean, my exercise is, I live for it. Um, I sleep better, um, and, uh, you know, I just feel better. Yeah. So. Other people can notice? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. My husband's here asking him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and, um. You know, I think some of the other side effects that you mentioned, definitely, I mean, I, I could pretty much check all the boxes mm -hmm. at the one center. point or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's been very, I'm not quitting any time. So. Good. Well, great. Thanks for sharing that. Who else is there? Somebody, there's somebody out there, maybe you, Nancy, or anyone else here. Or has anyone else had a chance to use it? Come on up and share if you want. Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on up. Thanks for coming up and sharing. I'll just hold this for you. You can just talk to the group if you like. Okay. Well, my wife and I started this about six years ago. Uh, she had some hormone issues, and she was kind of feeling down. She came up with this bio tea. Mm. And I'm like, okay, you want to do it? So I did this for her, mm. and it changed our life dramatically. Mm. I used to work out back then, and the muscles didn't feel like muscles. It would be like wasting my time. So now when you work out, your muscles feel like muscles. Mm. Um, her body is in much better shape. And then uh, our libidos are back to normal. So, but no, it's really been a change for our life. Great. Great. It's really good. And we're still doing it. So. And you look like you do it. Yeah. Congratulations on your success. Good. Thank well, thanks for coming up. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, come on up, Nancy. Sure. You've done this before, huh? A few. All right. We don't want to put you on the spot. They all want to hear. Most of them know me, so they know the story. Yeah, but, we'll um, I was privileged enough to go with uh, Dr. Nanda when we went to check out BioT and really what it was about. And we had many discussions about, you know, we're doing all this exterior work on people, but we aren't looking at what's going on inside. So 
a part of part of our um, kind of journey getting there was to provide something for the general well-being of our patients that would add to the result of what was happening besides make them healthier and better. Um, I began, because some of you know and some of you don't, that um, at 52, uh, super fit, very healthy, no family history, going back four generations, I had two heart attacks and open heart surgery. So I really, my journey was to go to prevent that for myself, but as a result, all these other things came into play. I'm 71, I work like I did 25 years ago, I'm clear thinking, I think I'm better at my game than I was 20 years ago, sleep well to what uh, Nancy was sharing with you, and it's just an overall well-being that you can't describe. I tell people all the time, you don't know you feel bad until you feel better. Mm. And so a lot of the people here that are, are in the process of this understand that. So we just feel blessed as a practice to be able to offer that to our patients. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, you bet. So let's, uh, these are just, uh, I got a few pictures from my practice uh, that people, my, my patients, sometimes they send me pictures. I don't ask for pictures, but they send me pictures. So the rule is if you send me pictures, I could show them somewhere sometime. <laughs> so increased energy levels, restored zest for life, relief from anxiety and depression, all the things we talked about. Uh, these are just more texts, just crazy pictures I got here. So, uh, yeah, so that was after I had uh, checked my hormones. Uh, they were low here at the 12-week mark, and then, so that's 18 months later. So, anyhow, so let's go here. Let me just share with you one little video clip that I think you'll find helpful. Um, this is kind of, again, a shout-out to help for the military people, but did you know that Suicide and depression are significantly bad problems in our society. It's particularly prominent in the military population. And in the veterans, one person every 28 days takes their own life, largely due to PTSD. So we don't want that. This is a remarkable therapy that will help them in that regard. And I just want to share this video clip with you. Oh, wait, here we go. I spent 23 years in the military. I retired three years ago. You'd expect to enjoy your retirement. Life for myself every day was uh, sitting at the house, anxiety, depression, not a lot of energy, didn't want to get out of the house, didn't want to really do much. Sitting at home, suffering from depression, PTSD, be by myself. So many of our veterans come back with post-traumatic stress syndrome. That's a big problem. They can't think well. Their memory's gone. Their energy level's gone. They don't sleep well. Their relationships are really on the mend, and they really can't get functional jobs. So normal treatment prior to uh, being pelleted was going to see the doctor. They want to put you in some sort of counseling, anger management. The problem I have with that is it, it, really, it really sets you back, I believe. Um, it doesn't really get to the root of the problem. You know the interesting thing, conventional medicine, what they do, they think antidepressants. They think memory pills, which resemble amphetamines, and then sleeping pills to sleep at night are the answer. They're really not the answer because if you look at quality of life, those people are no better off than they were before they were medicated. The reality is at least 50% of those people, especially the ones that have had traumatic brain injury, blast injuries, and those kinds of things in the war, they have hormone imbalances, which begins with the pituitary gland. Their growth hormones are low. Their testosterone levels are low. In women, their estradiol levels are low. Dr. Donovitz, of course, came over, and uh, we met at the back of the bay at Top Golf, and uh, he was like, just, you know, just please, please, I promise you, you will feel better. He says, it won't cost you anything. He said, just come to the office, and, and let's get going on this, because I want to see you live a, a better quality life. What we do is actually optimize their hormones, get rid of their symptoms naturally using bioidentical hormones. That way you don't have to be over medicated and guess what? Their quality of life returns. So they have a great quality of life instead of being over medicated where they can't work and they can't function in their relationships with their wives and their children. A friend told me about BioT. He sent me a link to the website. Thought I'd give it a shot. I noticed the difference fairly quickly. Family members have come to me and say, wow, you know, we've known you our whole life and you're doing a lot better. After the second week, I, I started 
leaving the house again, it made me feel wonderful. I'm smiling more and, you know, I'm enjoying life now. Get a better quality of sleep at night. Um, before the therapy, I was sleeping probably three hours a night and now I'm getting a good six hours. Pain levels, it's, it, they're way down. I'm up to running four miles a day now. As before, I, some days I wouldn't even get out of bed. Now when I get out pretty much on a daily basis, at the dog park, whatever activity that might be going on, I feel like going now. Before, I didn't feel like going. With BioT, it's, it's, it's given my retirement back. And the depression's going away, the anxiety's going away, and the energy level's way up, way up. BioT changed my, my way of life. You know, this treatment has been uh, much better than any treatment I've ever been through over the last five years. If you are suffering from PTSD, you know, the, the medications, the, the rehashing everything, the counselors, the anger management, they, there are other options. It, it's a simple blood test. What do you have to lose? I would recommend it for any of my brothers out there, sisters, you know, please, you know, give it a try. It, it's amazing how something so small that's implanted can make a big difference in your life. Definitely like to thank Dr. D and Mandy for approaching me that day. Um, it has made a great change in my life, and I just want to tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you, BioT. Okay. One final slide here, and this is basically, these are, again, are things that make your uh, hormones last longer and work better, and that's these nutraceuticals. So we'll have some compounds to get your vitamin D levels up and that kind of thing. One particularly applicable thing right now is uh, immune enhancement, right? We all want better immunity, especially to fight things like viruses and COVID and all of that. So with the BioT method, you will actually add five additional layers of immune protection between the testosterone and the thyroid, the vitamin A, the D, the K, as well as the probiotic. Immune enhancers to recover faster. So uh, and those data have borne out nationwide as well. So. Uh, I just want to thank everybody that's come tonight. Thank all of you for coming to share your situation. Um, uh, we've got some unique things here tonight. Dr. Nanda is going to come up here just right now and share with you some really specific good news for all of you that are listening to this. And if you're listening to this recording, I would encourage you to get your blood done, find out where your levels are, get it checked, get it analyzed, and see if, uh, see if you feel that this therapy has some merit for you. So with that, I want to thank you for having me. and Dr.